What's up reefers and welcome back to another video here at AquaSD. My name is Jack and today we are doing a new episode of the top 10 of our favorite corals that came in some of our recent shipments. In addition, we will be giving you some tips on how to keep them happy and healthy. All of these corals are available for purchase on our website, so if you see something you want, head over to AquaSD.com and grab it before someone else beats you to it. Now let's get into the video. coral on our list at number 10 is this XL Rainbow Yuma Recordia. Yumas are an awesome addition to any reef tank because they are relatively easy to keep and don't have any extreme care requirements. In addition, they come in a wide variety of different color combinations and can be used to make a super colorful mushroom garden. This specific Yuma has some really amazing colors. There are a mixture of different reds, blues, and purples in the middle portion of the mushroom, and then there is a nice green ring around the outer edges. Plus, it has a really cool string of bounce bubbles that give it some extra character. Here are some tips to consider when keeping mushroom corals. For placement, you should keep mushrooms in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get blasted by light or flow. For lighting, we recommend low lighting or a shaded area, around 50 to 75 par as mushrooms usually don't like a lot of intense light. For flow, mushrooms need low flow to prevent them from becoming agitated and disconnecting from the substrate they're on. For feeding, mushrooms don't need to be fed but can benefit from some target feeding of particulate foods. Next on our list at number nine is this crazy split bower banky. Bower bankies have really jumped in popularity within the hobby recently as more really unique color combinations come to the market. This one is no exception to that rule as it is very unique and has some awesome colors present. Some of the polyps are a bright baby blue and some of the polyps are a rainbow red color with all of the polyps having a wide variety of different colored speckles. Not only is it colorful, but this is a nice colony already so there is no need to wait for it to grow out from a small frag like most of the ones you would find available online. If you're looking for something unique to add to your tank, this is definitely one to consider. Here are some tips to consider when keeping bower bankies. For placement, you should keep them in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get blasted by light or flow. For lighting, we recommend low lighting or a shaded area, around 50 to 100 par as they usually don't like a lot of intense light. For flow, bowers need low flow, just enough to keep them clean of detritus, but not so much that the flesh becomes damaged. For feeding, bowers don't need to be fed, but target feeding of meaty or particulate foods can really accelerate their growth. The next coral we will be highlighting is this Aussie Mushroom Rock. This rock is full of these bright orange Discosoma mushrooms that really stand out when you see them in a tank. Discosomas are great mushrooms for a reef tank as they often have really bright colors and can do really well in the lower parts of the tank where there isn't as much light. These are great for adding color to a tank where it might otherwise have a dark space that many other corals wouldn't do well in. These specific discos are about as bright as they come. When you see these in person, they immediately catch your eye due to their bright color and the number of polyps, making for a perfect way to add some contrast to many of the green colors you would find in most tanks. Here are some tips to consider when keeping mushroom corals. For placement, you should keep mushrooms in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get blasted by light or flow. For lighting, we recommend low lighting or a shaded area, around 50 to 75 par as mushrooms usually don't like a lot of intense light. For flow, mushrooms need low flow to prevent them from becoming agitated and disconnecting from the substrate they are on. For feeding, mushrooms don't need to be fed, but can benefit from some target feeding of particulate foods. Coming in at number seven on our list is this Monsoon Aquacultured Lord. Lords are a great addition to any tank as they tend to be relatively easy to keep and come in a wide variety of different color combinations. This specific Lord is an amazing rainbow coloration and has just about every color that you can think of. Plus, it is aquacultured, so it should hold all of those colors instead of morphing to red or orange. In terms of color, it has reddish orange in the center, then you get some blues and yellows in the secondary ring, and finally the outer ring has purple and red to top it all off. Here are some tips to consider when keeping lords. For placement, you should keep lords in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get blasted by light or flow. For lighting, we recommend low lighting or a shaded area, around 50 to 100 par, as they usually don't like a lot of intense light. For flow, lords need low flow, just enough to keep them clean of detritus, but not so much that they become agitated and close up. For feeding, lords don't need to be fed, but target feeding of meaty or particulate foods can really accelerate their growth. Next on our list at number six is this rainbow trachophilia. Trachies are awesome because they come in a wide variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. Plus, they have a really cool feeding response. 
This one is an absolute gem. It's a large coral and would make for a great centerpiece on the sand bed of a tank. The oral disc is a crazy neon green with purple striping, and this coloration continues onto the skirt as well. Then you have the outer ring of color that is a combination of various hues of red and pink. When keeping trachies, we recommend the following. For placement, you should keep trachies in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get blasted by light or flow. For lighting, we recommend low to moderate lighting, around 50 to 100 par for the best growth. Too much light can cause bleaching or make them close up. For flow, low to moderate flow is best because it will keep detritus from building up on top of the coral. Too much flow will cause the coral to close up. For feeding, target feeding with meaty or pelletized foods is best for growth and to get the most out of the colors. The coral at number five on our list is this monsoon aquacultured rainbow lord. As mentioned before, lords are a great addition to any tank as they tend to be relatively easy to keep and come in a wide variety of different color combinations. This specific lord is another one with really nice rainbow coloration and it is also aquacultured so it should hold all of those colors instead of morphing to red or orange. In terms of color, this piece has every color you could want in a coral. It has a combination of reds, oranges, greens, yellows, and purple. Plus, you get some blue striping intermittently throughout some of the polyps. Here are some tips to consider when keeping lords. For placement, you should keep lords in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get blasted by light or flow. For lighting, we recommend low lighting or a shaded area, around 50 to 100 par as they usually don't like a lot of intense light. For flow, lords need low flow, just enough to keep them clean of detritus, but not so much that they become agitated and close up. For feeding, lords don't need to be fed, but target feeding of meaty or particulate foods can really accelerate their growth. Number four on our list is this master button scully. Scolies have always been a highly desirable coral for collectors because they have some of the best color combinations and also have an awesome feeding response. This button scoli is everything you ever dreamed of. What it lacks in size is made up for with some really amazing colors. It's got a combination of bright burnt orange and toxic green on the oral disc, and then the outer ring has a combination of oranges, greens, and yellows. The bright colors all come together to make a really nice contrast that is sure to stand out in a tank. When keeping scolies, we recommend the following. For placement, keep them on the sand bed or in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get too much lighter flow. For lighting, we recommend low to moderate lighting, around 75 to 125 par for the best growth in color. For flow, low to moderate flow is best. Too much flow can make it difficult for them to catch food. For feeding, target feeding with meaty or pelletized foods is best for growth and to get that really cool feeding response. Number three on our list is this grafted yellow hammer. Hammers are awesome because they have really nice color combinations and are a great way to add a little bit of flow to your tank. In addition, they tend to be on the easier side when it comes to keeping euphelia, so they make for a great addition to any tank regardless of that reefer's experience level. This specific piece is a really nice branching hammer that has some bright yellow tips, and then you get a graft of green that gives it a unique flair to set it apart from the others. When keeping hammers, we recommend the following. For placement, hammers can be kept in most parts of the tank but should only be kept near other hammers or frog spawn to avoid coral warfare. For lighting, we recommend moderate lighting, around 100 to 150 par for the best growth. Too much light can cause bleaching or make them close up. For flow, moderate flow is great to keep them dancing in the water column. Too much flow will make them close up and too little flow can cause detritus buildup. For feeding, hammers do not need to be fed, but definitely benefit from target feeding of particulate foods like reefroids. Number two on our list is this Monsoon Aquacultured Master Scully. Scullies are still one of the most highly desirable corals for collectors because they have an awesome feeding response and have some of the best color combinations in the hobby. This scully is everything you ever dreamed of, with those master grade colors and the fact that it's aquacultured is the cherry on top. It's got bright toxic green in the center surrounded by a purple ring with hints of red and orange. Then outside of that is another ring consisting of green and some awesome red blotching to really give it that master grade of color. As mentioned before, when keeping scolies, we recommend the following. For placement, keep them on the sand bed or in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get too much lighter flow. For lighting, we recommend low to moderate lighting, around 75 to 125 par for the best growth in color. For flow, low to moderate flow is best. Too much flow can make it difficult for them to catch food. For feeding, target feeding with meaty or pelletized foods is best for growth and to get that really cool feeding response. Finally, coming in at number one on our list is this holy grail bower banky. Bower bankies are such a cool coral. It's almost as if you took a lordhoensis and a scalemia and put them together to make a single perfect coral. This one has some awesome colors present and it is truly deserving of the holy grail title. When it comes to color, this one has a bright green in the oral discs, which is surrounded by a speckled purple color. Then you get that bright yellow ring and finally a hint of reddish orange on the far outside ring of the polyps. 
As if the color wasn't enough, this is already a decently sized colony and will save you a lot of time when compared to trying to grow out a single polyp frag. If you are looking for something unique to add to your tank, this is definitely one to consider. Here are some tips to consider when keeping barbinkies. For placement, you should keep them in the bottom third of the tank where they won't get blasted by light or flow. For lighting, we recommend low lighting or a shaded area, around 50 to 100 par, as they usually don't like a lot of intense light. For flow, bowers need low flow, just enough to keep them clean of detritus, but not so much that the flesh becomes damaged. For feeding, bowers don't need to be fed, but target feeding of meaty or particulate foods can really accelerate their growth. All right, that covers everything for this episode, and we hope you enjoyed getting to see some of our favorite corals here at AquaSD. If you like this video and want to see more videos like this, give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. We want to know which coral you like the most, so leave a comment below telling us your favorite coral from this video. Also, if you missed the last video, check out the link in the screen and give it a watch. Until next time, happy reefing and see you soon.